Welcome, it's Tuesday and we're doing a, a three things. We're going to be doing a paprika chicken. We're gonna do cream corn and garlic mashed potatoes and uh, all have some history. That's why I wanted to put them all together for a, a, a meal. I, uh, my name is George Gary and I do these events at 6.30 on Facebook. If I can get them up on Facebook on time, uh, I work at uh, around the country doing cooking classes. And what's neat is a lot of you are tuning in from back east and up north and even uh, Australia. I uh, have been all over the world teaching, so I get a lot of you. And right now I'm staying at home like all of you are, and I hope you're staying safe. And I thought Lowry's corn we're going to do first. And Lowry's is uh, a historical place. It opened up in the 30s. And um, it just is a, a remarkable uh, place to eat. And they have some offshoots. They've got a place called Tam O'Shanter that uh, Walt Disney went to every day for his lunch. It uh, became the commissary for the Walt Disney Studios back when he was there. And uh, I talk about it in my Hollywood book. I call the LA Legendary Restaurant book the Hollywood book. At the end of the whole uh, tape today, you'll see the book and how to get it. And uh, I'll uh, even put some uh, pictures of the inside of the uh, uh, Lowry's is great. Lowry's will be in my next book, uh, Lowry's Prime Rib. And uh, what I did is I have a number of the recipes that they've given us. And this cream corn is so good. If you've ever been to a Lowry's in Chicago, over in Asia, in Hawaii, uh, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, San Francisco, I don't think New York, but if you've ever been to any of them, you'll see these humongous things that are silver, that they have all of the uh, meat in, and then they have side dishes, and the waitresses are uh, very formal, and they have little hats, and they've been there forever. And they do a spinning salad. It's a whole show when you go. And it's interesting because the, the guy, the carver, will come over with this big vessel that uh, looks like it would take five people to roll. And they even had to reinforce the flooring because of this, these uh, vessels are so heavy. And she'll say, what type of uh, cut would you like? And let's say you want the Diamond Jim Brady cut, which is really large. And she'll look over at the cutter and she'll say, uh, she'll take the Diamond Jim Brady. And all, we could get rid of her because everybody at the table can hear, you know, he can hear everybody. So anyway, Simple ingredients, you all have it. And what's really great about this is the corn itself. You can use frozen, fresh, or canned. Dry it or, or drain it. And when you go with the corn, uh, I used frozen today. I didn't think there would be any frozen. Canned are still a little rough right here, but you need three cups. And corn is fresh right now. Uh, it's just coming into season. So if you wanna take it off the cob, you can do that. We've got butter flour, salt, heavy cream, and it really is heavy cream, and then we have some sugar. So we're gonna make a roux first. So how we do that is we're gonna take it and melt our butter a little bit, and as soon as it melts down completely, well, sorry. Neil is looking at things online instead of paying attention to being a cameraman today. So <laughs> Neil will not get any more uh, bowls to lick because he really likes to lick the bowls and stuff. So he doesn't get any more. No, no cream corn for you. <laughs> so anyway, we've got the flour. As soon as this melts, we're going to add the flour in and make a roux to an extent. And it... Uh, we don't want it to be boiling. We just want the, it to melt. And uh, I'm trying to watch my heat on this because if it starts getting too hot, the butter will brown and we don't want that. So you could melt this, but you want the pan to be hot. So you might as well melt it this way. I'm thinking of melting it in the microwave, but uh, it doesn't, you've got to melt it anyway. So might as well do the pan. So as soon as we've got it melted, and it's bubbling a little bit, you're gonna take the flour and sprinkle it on top and cook the flour. So this is really thickening. We're making a white sauce to an extent. 
And when I'm doing this, I'm smashing it to make sure I don't have any chunks of flour. And then we're gonna take our salt, place that in there, and we're gonna let that go for just a minute and clean the edges, because thank goodness we have these rubber spatulas that can stand heat. So just like that. Heavy cream, kind of room temperature, and we want it to stay in a pourable container. So we're gonna pour this in slowly. And if it steams to get too hot, lower the temperature a little bit, and this will thicken up. And if you need to, you can use a rubber spatula or a whisk. And you'll see the thickness the flour in there so now it thins it out makes it nice and you want all that cream in there but you don't dump it all in at once you don't want it to curdle and you don't want it to separate so technically I've made a white sauce without any pepper or flavoring at this point this is also the way you make a, um, a macaroni and cheese and make a white sauce. So just like that. Now I'm gonna check and make sure the edges, see right there? You wanna make sure that's all cooked and not burning. And lower the temperature a little bit. Now you're gonna take, as soon as that comes to a little bit of a boil, not a kind of not a rapid boil, but it starts bubbling, which you'll start seeing it bubble on the edges first. Then you're gonna add your corn in, just like that. Stir this corn in, just like that. And let this cook for a little bit. Clean the edges. And you're gonna add a little bit of sugar. It's only about a tablespoon. It looks like more when you do it that way. And we'll let that cook. That corn was cold, come to think of it. So we're gonna let that cook about, let's see, we're gonna heat it up completely and then it's ready to go. You can make this ahead, which I've done before. Make it ahead, put it in a casserole dish, warm it in the oven, or you can uh, put it back on a skillet and warm it up. But here is your cream corn, and it's better than that can of cream corn. It doesn't taste too good. So this has some really good flavor to it. Now there's a place called um, uh, the Del Rey, and they do a corn like this, but they add shredded cheese into it. So if you want, you can add about a half a cup of shredded uh, uh, cheese into it. You would use something like a cheddar, and it would be really nice. And make sure you shred it really well put it in at this point, fold it in, and then throw it in the oven just to finish it up. So, and there's our corn, and we'll be, finish that up. We'll be back, and we're gonna be making our paprika chicken next. I do culinary tours to the south of France, and I thought I knew how mashed potatoes were made. Garlic mashed potatoes, you just add some garlic into it, but that's not how they do it in the south of France. I've been going to the south for about 30 years now, taking groups down there, and uh, what we do is this is garlic, cloves, uh, coming to a boil with water. And I do this three times. I clean the water out. so. This is the third time. I've already done it twice. So let me dump the water. You know what's interesting is I was at one grocery store today and I couldn't find any garlic. And uh, so they said, oh, there's garlic. It was a packaged garlic. No, I want you to take two garlic bulbs and put it in there. And you can see it right there. Now, after you put it in water, boil three times, then you can see it almost smashes pretty easily. Boop. Except one wants to go crazy. So now if you see any of the green little sprouts, pull those out. That is what gives you a little heartburn. And um, 
you just smash it coarsely. You don't have to worry about each one. And uh, the reason why the green sprouts right now is because these really are garlic from last year. Garlic comes in uh, about May and June from Gilroy is one of the places. And there's some places in uh, Chile. But I'm going to take about half of my cream that's listed. And I'm going to bring that to a boil. Meanwhile, I've taken potatoes. I've done some russet and some uh, Yukon gold. Cooked them. And they're still hot. And I'm going to rice them. If you've never riced potatoes, I did this on the morning show. Those of you see me on the San Diego Living and the San Diego... Uh, CBS station. I did this one day and we had more people email wondering what in the world this thing was. This is a ricer. There's some that the bottom comes out and you do a different plate. Don't get that. This is the one's from OXO and OXO has about the best of everything. When I put that, let's go back to this. Heavy cream. It'll start bubbling. You don't want it to bubble over. As soon as it starts bubbling, you just let the cream infuse by that garlic. So it starts bubbling. While we're doing that, we're gonna take a few of the potatoes and you do skin the potatoes. If you keep the skin on, I thought, oh, I'll just keep the skin on one time. It takes longer to do that. You have to keep cleaning it. Watch this. See it ricing? And all you do is that to all your potatoes. And the cream just did that one more time. So I wish I had a left hand. We're gonna pour this through the ricer and any of that garlic will just rice through also turn it off Boop. rice the garlic now that garlic is infused and it's a little harder to rice but you're gonna rice all your potatoes and some butter and some heavy cream and that's it then you're gonna have the best Sometimes you have to use a little bit more muscle. But we're going to rice all these, and we'll be back in just a moment. All right, so you can see I pressed all of, this is the last one, and got to make sure you smash the garlic down in that cream. So we'll go through, and you get all this schmuck, I call it, up above. And then you're going to take the last of the cream. It goes right through, but I do that. And depending on if the butter is hot or cold, this is room temperature butter. I put it through here, just so everything's gone through. And squish that. Look at that, oh, this is so good. Then clean the top off. Now, this is where you just take a fork and mix it up a little bit like that. And these are the softest, the fluffiest potatoes you've ever had. Because we, now see, we have a little bit of green that's that little inside of the garlic. So pull that out. Unless you want to put some chives in here and then nobody will know what you had. But you can see the potatoes. Salt and pepper them. And you're ready to go. You can put these into the oven to warm up at 350. In case you're doing a ham or any meat, meat normally sits about 10, 15 minutes. While that's sitting, seat, sitting, waiting, put this into the oven where the meat was, and then by the time the meat has wasted, oh, not wasted, <laughs> rested. rested for 10 minutes, then you can pull this out and this will be ready to go. But right now these do have some warmth to it, and you'll love these potatoes. Remember the ricer? oxo.com you can get it anywhere the garlic wash it three times and don't use the already uh garlic in the peeled. little packages you don't want it peeled you want to peel it yourself and then and it does take a while but it's worth it about two bulbs of garlic thanks so much and we'll see you next time all right we're back our corn is done, we've done our potatoes, and now we're going to do our chicken, paprika chicken. Now this was served on Sunday nights. I gotta make sure it's, yep, specialty of the day, Sunday, at the uh, Brown Derby. 
and the Brown Derby, when I was working on my book, I would tell people I'm doing a, a book on historical restaurants and everyone would say, is the Brown Derby gonna be in it? Everywhere around the country, they know the Brown Derby and I think it's because of I Love Lucy and the show and where they filmed it with uh, the spaghetti episode in Brown Derby with William Holden. So I uh, never got to eat in Brown Derby. The only way you can eat in a Brown Derby today is there's one replica at Walt Disney World. So you can go to Florida and eat there. You only have about five things on the, the menu. I uh, went around the country to see if this would work and this was one of the recipes. I did a class called Eating at the Brown Derby. So we would do these biscuits that were phenomenal and uh, they're in my book. And then we have this chicken dish. So every night was a specialty of the house. The food was so rich. Uh, this is a chicken dish with a lot of heavy cream. I noticed when I was researching recipes, because this place opened in the, the night, early part of the century, uh, they used a lot of celery seed and celery uh, salt. So I had to buy some, I had never used it, but when I was working and making these recipes, uh, replicas, I started using what they did. So that's what we did. We also have, they used a fryer chicken because it was cheaper and it was a little bit different back then. I'm using thighs today and I've made the, with the skin on and I'm only doing two. I'm not gonna do the recipe for, I think I have four here. So what we're gonna do is just take and melt some butter and they used butter in this and that's a lot of butter it looks like but hey it'll be good and the thighs have the bones still in it in a little bit and they've got a lot more flavor in fact i bought a package of uh six and it was less expensive than a package of two of the breast so we're just taking flour and pepper and i know i did chicken last week i did a um, a chicken dish that we took and I dredged it in some heavy cream or milk, I believe, and then back and forth. This recipe is only one time in the flour. So we're going to make that butter melt first. And I'm going to pull the butter out. Take some of it out just in case I need it a little bit later. And we're gonna put that up higher. We don't want the butter to brown too much. We're gonna take and the chicken is dry. And technically this just makes a little bit of a, a, a brown on, browning on the chicken itself. So I'm gonna take this side down, the skin side down first, and then I will turn it over and then finish it off. So this dish, so easy and you can say you're eating at the brown derby it was very popular the other popular dish over at the brown derby is do not use this flour for anything else if you finish with your flat your your chicken get rid of it you can't use it because it has the chicken juices in that so the brown derby is known for the cob salad and uh in my book I did a lot of research on the Cobb salad. Most of us will go to a restaurant and Cobb salads will be like a volcano with a little rows of cheese and all this stuff. And technically they didn't do it that way. They did everything table side. They'd come to your table with the greens and say, would you like egg? Would you like blue cheese? Egg, blue cheese, bacon, and turkey were the only real things going on that. Uh, and tomatoes and some onions. So we're gonna brown that on one side. And we've got chicken stock and heavy cream, like I said. And we've got paprika, because paprika chicken. We've got onion and the celery salt. So as soon as one side starts browning, we will take, it's not browning all the way yet. And I'll take a little bit more butter in there. And now this, I taught this over in Indiana 
And there were 24 people and we had 24 of these. We made it into a large batch. So if you're having a party, you can do that. What you do is you do this all ahead of time and then you put it in a, a, a large pan and just throw it in the oven to warm it up. So, so after you get one side, there you go. You got that side, just like that. And we're gonna add the onion. And we'll let this sit for another minute. I turned it over. And what I'll do is I'll finish this off in the oven. That's why I make sure I have a pan that can go into the oven. I sometimes will use a larger pan if I'm doing a number of uh, pieces. Then we're going to take and um, add the paprika in. Sprinkle that on top. And just making sure I'm adding this the same way. Oh, nope, I do cream next. Make sure the cream's room temperature. If the cream is, you can look at, look at that sizzling. Does that look good? Yes, heavy cream. And you know who used to eat there a lot? It was Mae West. And uh, I talk about her in the book, Eating There. And there is our little bit of stock. stock. And our celery seed. And I don't know how the stars ate this way all the time because, well, they would have three martinis. The martinis were small. And then they would also eat large meals and uh, then go back to work. So we're going to let that simmer a little bit. And the juice, the chicken will start cooking completely through. And the cream will create a thicker sauce and that you can spoon on. So when you serve this, you can serve it with some rice or pasta noodles off to the side or just by itself. We're gonna do it with the uh, cream corn next to it that we made and our mashed potatoes we've got. So we're just gonna let that cook until it's done. So internal temperature about 140 degrees, 145 of the chicken. So use a thermometer and if you want, throw it in the oven to finish it off and do the same thing. So we'll be back and let you see what everything looks like. All right, so here's our paprika chicken. It uh, came out of the oven. You can see how the sauce is right thick. And we'll serve this up with our cream corn. And we'll have dinner. So take care, I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you soon, bye.